It's been about 30 days since Google released this. It's $1,000 flagship Google Pixel 8 Pro. And in those last 30 days, I've been able to use this phone every single day and put it through its paces. I went to see if Google could tempt me over to Android this year with things like its temperature sensor. And I've used an iPhone pretty much every day for the past kind of five or six years, but I'm really open always to moving to a phone that is good and fun to use. And I have to say that this year, Google has done a really good job with the Pixel 8 Pro. Before we start though, I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is mad. So if you enjoy this video, then subscribe to the channel because that does really help. And now you've done that, let's get in and talk about this 30 days later with the Google Pixel 8 Pro. No matter who it is who's creating a flagship phone, one of the first things you have to nail all the time is gonna be that design because people want something that is familiar and easy to use and looks really good. And this year, Google have got it spot on when they come to the Pixel 8 Pro. The whole design of this phone is just really nice. And that 6.7 inch display is the standout on the design of this phone. However, there's still some things you need to take a look at. The camera visor on the back is one of those things that when you first look at it, you might think it's actually not very good looking, but when you come to using it every single day, it's a really good standout for Google. It's a little bit like the notches for Apple and the iPhone. The visor on the back of this, you know immediately that this is a Google Pixel. And I really like where it's positioned on this phone it's not too low so it gets in the way every time you use it it's just high enough to be in that perfect position and so far it doesn't really have any scratches or scuffs on it and it's something that's going to happen because it happened with the 7 pros last year and it is a bit of a glossy camera visor which i'm not a huge fan of i'd have preferred a matte camera visor but it does pick up fingerprints and smudges pretty easily but any sort of scratches it just hasn't got them yet one big jump that Google did this year on the Pixel 8 Pro was to swap the glossy back of the 7 Pro and change it for an almost like matte-like finish on the back of this phone. And I have to say that this is really good. It's so much better than a glossy phone. I think now gloss has had its time and matte is the future of pretty much all phones that are flagships. And this phone is just really unique in terms of the way it feels. It's just smooth. It's kind of buttery smooth, as people would say, but I really genuinely enjoy it. One thing that will slightly let the Pixel 8 Pro down just slightly in its design is the border of the phone because the bore of the phone is this glossy, plasticky metal. And I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of it being glossy and that shiny. If Google had decided to put a titanium frame on the Pixel 8 Pro, it would have been perfect. But sadly, it has this glossy finish around the side, which can pick up those fingerprints really easily and it can pick up scratches quite easily as well. So that's one thing that will let it down slightly. In that glossy housing, there's also the power button or the Google Assistant button, and you also have the volume rockers. And I'll be honest, the one thing I've noticed about the volume rockers really early on, just 30 days in, is that they feel a little bit flimsy. Like the ones on the iPhone, 30 days in, they feel absolutely fine and sturdy, but the ones on the Google Pixel 8 Pro feel a little bit like they could fall out at any point. They're not as solid as they should be, and it does feel a little bit wobbly. Having said that though, they do make quite nice clicky noises. So we can't complain about that too much, but they just do feel a little bit plasticky. The only other thing that lets the Pixel 8 Pro down just a little bit is that there is no MagSafe built in to the back of this phone. And if you've ever used an iPhone with MagSafe cases and accessories and chargers and wallets, you realize just how good and how important MagSafe is. And especially when you want to do some wireless charging. And I have quite a lot of wireless MagSafe stands but sadly, the back of this just doesn't have MagSafe built in. I went to the Google store and picked up one of those super thin mouse cases. And because I got 10% credit back when I bought the Pixel from the Pixel store, it made the case free. But it's just a little bit annoying that I have to go and buy a MagSafe case to get MagSafe. I feel like that MagSafe should be in every phone. I touched on this before, but one of the best things about a Google Pixel is got to be that display. It's a 6.7 inch OLED display and this might be one of the best displays that I've used on a phone. But if you get a Pixel 8 Pro, the first thing you need to do is go into your settings and turn on the highest resolution possible because out of the box, it's set to a lower resolution so you can have prolonged battery life. But having the full quality display switched on 
is definitely worth the really small amount of battery life that you might take a hit with during the day because you want to try and get the most out of this display because it is so good. The display is obviously what you use the most on the phone and as you can see this display on the Pixel 8 Pro is so good and by far it's probably one of my favorite bits of using that Pixel 8 Pro. The colors on this just pop and they're really quite accurate and it comes in really handy when you're watching any sort of content on this phone as well. You kind of don't want to put it down, you want to just keep using it and keep using it and keep using it. When you end up scrolling through Instagram and Twitter and looking at YouTube shorts then it just is a perfect display. It contrasts just seems good everything it's hard to explain it right because the display is just really nice you have to get it in your hand and use it to really understand how good of a display this is on the pixel 8 pro it also uses that cutout design at the top of the screen and it just becomes a lot less intrusive than if you have a phone that has a notch or a dynamic island when you're using the hole punch you get to see a lot more of the screen you don't lose as much content and it's not something that you think about all the time because what's in that corner might not necessarily be that important but i like the fact that this display feels big feels bright and is not interrupted by a big cutout as we're talking about that hole punch cutout the interesting thing about this is the way that it can use your face now to unlock your phone because we've had face unlock on Google Pixels before and it's been it's been okay but now on the Pixel 8 Pro it has got so much better. Google upgraded the face unlock this year on the Pixel 8 Pro so you can now use it to log into things like your banking or you can use it as a proper biometric security unlock feature when you go into something that needs that added extra security. The Face ID has got better in terms of unlocking the phone, but when you get into dark and dim lit rooms, it can be a bit of a struggle and it doesn't always pick up your face. However, when you're in a good lit room, when you're outside, it's got so much better and the face unlock process on this is just a lot smoother than it has been on the phones in the past couple of years. But my favorite way to still unlock the Pixel weirdly is just using the fingerprint because it just seems a little bit more convenient for me because when I'm unlocking the phone even though you can pick the phone up and the display will come on I've already double tapped before I've picked the phone up and the fingerprint scanner actually works really well. It's positioned really nicely so when you actually want to go and unlock the phone you don't even have to look where you need to place your finger. You can use it when the display is off and it's quick. That's probably one of the best things about this fingerprint reader that is under the display and it unlocks really quickly, smoothly and I have no problem. However, there are some things on the Pixel 8 Pro that potentially don't work as much as Google would want you to think that they work. If you have a look at that camera visor on the back, you'll see that you've got your cameras, you've got your flash and then just below it, it looks like something that could be a LiDAR sensor, but it's not. It's a thermometer. Google decided to give us a thermometer in the back of this phone. I don't even want to lie to you and say that I've used this during the first 30 days of using the phone because the only time that I have used it is probably once because it was there. But any other time, what do I need a thermometer for? I'm never going to go and check the temperature of drinks. One, I don't like hot drinks. I only drink cold drinks, so it'd be pointless. And two, why? Why do you need a thermometer on a phone? Google are meant to be upgrading this so it can read the temperature of humans. Uh, but at the moment, it's not meant to read the temperature of people. It's just one of these weird gimmicks in the back of the phone that isn't amazing. Something that is not a gimmick though this year, and I want to talk about it really quickly, is the Tensor G3 chip. I haven't found the Google Pixel 8 Pro this year to be slow, lagging, stutter behind or anything in fact it's been super quick 100 of the time i found android 14 this year to be so smooth responsive and snappy and it's been a really nice experience moving over from ios to this android 14 on the pixel 8 pro i have to say that the battery life on the pixel 8 pro because of that tensor g3 chip has been phenomenal i don't know what it's doing in the background and i'm sure there's people out there that definitely know what it's been doing but for me whatever it is doing it's doing it really well because i can get to the end of the day with more than enough battery life because of that g3 chip and like i said it's smooth it's responsive and it's kind of been a pleasure using android 14 on the pixel 8 pro when we come to talk about the pictures and the videos that the pixel 8 pro can do 
I'll tell you something, I have been impressed. The pictures, every single time that this phone takes, absolutely hit. I've very rarely taken a photo and thought, oh God, that just doesn't look very good. It might not look good because I've taken it, but the phone does everything it needs to do. And when you take the photos on this phone, you also have the added extras of being able to use the pro mode features as well. And I'm not a pro level camera photo taker at all. I won't use them, but for people that do, those options are really easily accessible inside the camera app. One of my favorite things about taking photos on this phone is the AI features that you can get in editing. And one of the best things is using that magic eraser to get rid of people, get rid of signs, get rid of stuff that is in your photos that you don't want. And I'll tell you, it doesn't hit every single time, but like 80% of the time, it does a really good job without you having to go in and fiddle around with it. When we get onto video as well that the Pixel 8 Pro can take, I'm gonna take a step back and give it a really good 10 out of 10 because this year, the video on these Pixel 8 Pros have got really, really good. Whether you're taking it from the wide camera, the telephoto camera, or just that main lens, every time you just want to take a good video on this, you get it. Recording in 4K is something that I will always do, and the stabilization has really improved. The highlights and lowlights in the skies and the foreground have really improved as well. And overall, this is a really, really fun camera to use for photos and videos, and I cannot complain, and I cannot give it enough credit because of how good it is. There are a few things to me that the Pixel is lacking, and like I said before, not having MagSafe built into this, I'm not sure whether it's even possible, because I'm sure Apple kind of own all the rights to that, but if there's a way that they could do it, that would be really good. And I miss stuff like standby mode as well. There's apps that you can get that kind of reproduce standby mode, and I know the iPhone has it, and it does it really, really well. It's a shame the Pixel doesn't, because it's missing that. Overall though, this Pixel phone is like, if I was rating it out of 10, is a solid nine out of 10. There's things that it could improve on, but for the majority, this phone is so good and I can't put it down. I genuinely love it. Everything about it is fun. It's a really fun, good phone to use and it gives you everything you need. I do think though that the price of this brand new is maybe a little bit much, especially for 128 gigs of base storage at $999. 256 I think should be the minimum but besides that you can probably get it on some really good deals as we're coming up to Christmas and probably after that as well but for me the Google Pixel 8 Pro is potentially the phone of the year if you enjoyed this video then why not subscribe to the channel like I said I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers which is insane so that would really really help and let me know what you think of the Pixel 8 Pro in the comments below and if you do all of that then I shall see you later